So good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming to this open dialogue between representatives, bringing perspectives from either the nurse practitioners or the physician assistant side. Tonight's event is titled, Bringing Role Clarity to Nurse Practitioners and Physician Assistants to Improve the Canadian Healthcare System. Um, brought to you by the McMaster Medicine and Health Society. My name is Derek Chan, and I will be moderating tonight's dialogue between the panelists and the audience. Before we, be, we are introduced to the panelists, the following is a brief background on the issues we will be focused on tonight. From a historical perspective, nurse practitioners have been working in Ontario since the early 1970s. By the end of 2010, there were 2,486 NPs practicing in Canada, 1,482 of which work in Ontario. Physician assistants, or PAs on the other hand, were recently introduced to Canada, first in Manitoba in 2002, and in Ontario in September 2008, where McMaster University played a role in establishing one of the first programs offered in the province with an inaugural class size of 21. The developments of both these health professional programs in Canada have raised some concerns for advocates on both sides. Questions have been raised through different mediums on the issue of the scope of practice for each and issues related to both the potential positive and negative effects of each profession on the Canadian healthcare system. The purpose of having tonight's dialogue is therefore aimed to bring clarity to issues of contention and the respective roles for both professions in clinical settings. Therefore, I would like to take this opportunity to remind everyone the importance of exercising common courtesy and respect in any sharing that is done within this dialogue. Tonight's panelist presentations will primarily address three categories of questions, and they are as follows. In your opinion, what are the similarities and differences between NPs and PAs? Are these similarities and differences clearly understood in the clinical environment? How have your interactions been with an NP or PA, and how has these interactions affected your delivery of health care? Last but not least, in recognizing that there are certain similarities between the two professions, should further steps be taken to delineate the responsibilities of each, and if so, how and why? So, the format of tonight's presentation will take place where 15 minutes have been allocated to each panelist. After everyone has completed their sharing, a break with refreshments will be provided. A period for dialogue open to both panelists and audience members will follow shortly after. With that said, I would now like to ask each of the panelists to briefly introduce themselves to everyone here, starting from, I guess, Nancy to John to Eric and then... Uh, I'm Nancy Meza. I'm a physician assistant. Uh, I'm working in the emergency department at Oakville Trafalgar Hospital. Uh, previously to graduating uh, and taking the program here at McMaster, uh, I was a paramedic, <clears throat> so that kind of explains why I'm interested in emergency medicine. And I was fortunate enough to be part of the very first inaugural PA class here at McMaster when we graduated in 2010. My name is John Cunnington, I'm an internist. I was fortunate enough to be in the first medical class here at McMaster. Oh, I'm coming. <laughs> Um, I'm an internist, a respirologist, and I'm also the assistant dean for the PA program. I'm Eric Staples, and uh, I'm a faculty member in the School of Nursing and a site coordinator for the Primary Healthcare Nurse Practitioner Program here at McMaster. Um, in my previous career before coming here, I was an acute care NP at uh, Women's College Hospital and then uh, St. Michael's Hospital in oncology and then uh, acute pain services. and. Um, Welcome everybody, I'm happy here to talk to NPs and PAs. Alright, I'm Ruth Cannon, I'm a teaching professor here at McMaster. So I teach not only in the undergrad program, but the NP program. And then part of my role, I work one day a week, it's a joint appointment. So I work one day a week in family practice as an NP. Alright, so thank you very much. Um, I guess we will begin with Dr. Pennington. Well, thank you, thank you, uh, Derek, for having us, us all here, and good to be here. <coughs> it's a challenging and interesting question, and I'm going to start with this anecdote. So recently, one of our students went as an observer to the cardiac investigation unit of the Hamilton General Hospital. A nurse in the unit asked her who she was. She said she was a PA student. The nurse responded by saying, so you're the one who's going to take my job. 
to tell a story, to illustrate the degree of anxiety and of even fear that exists regarding the introduction of this new profession, assistant, physician assistant. If we're going to address these fears, we need some soul searching about this. We need to, some, to, to try and look at the issue of role clarity. It's an issue which I've been thinking a lot about in the past few months. Because it is, a, um, it is complicated and uncertain. So in the next 15 minutes, I'm going to try and give you my thoughts about role clarity for NPs and PAs. And the proviso I'd like to make is that, as with all attempts at truth-telling, with the best will in the world, one can only tell, one, only, one can't help but see things through one's own eyes. Uh, all attempts at truth-telling are approximations and are incomplete. However, it doesn't mean we shouldn't make the attempt to try and come to some understanding of the issues. Yet we must be aware of the limitations and the incompleteness of our analysis. I'd also like to acknowledge the feedback I got from Dr. Eric Staples. He was kind enough to read the first draft of my talk. He helped me to understand more about the history of NPAs. But more importantly, his, his queries caused me to reflect upon my preconceived notions. And that's a, always a useful thing. So the first question I'm usually asked by people is, what's a PA? The second question is, what's the difference between an MP and a PA? And <clears throat> I was asked this long when I first started this project back in 2007, and I've been struggling to find the answer to that question ever since. Um, but you can't answer this question without asking this question, what's an MP? Uh, and I'm not talking to the NPs in the audience, because they know what the MP is, but as a physician, you know, to me, it's all, I don't know, MP, PA, it's, uh, it's, it, there's a lot to learn. Uh, as with all issues, you can't understand the knowledge, the knowledge of where we are without thinking about some, how we got where we are. What's the history? What's the, the history of, of these, these activities? How, did it, how does it happen that we are where we are? So I'm going to allude to a few of the events which have happened, but obviously, history is a big topic, and you can't do it all in 15 minutes. So it's my, it's my take on the history, my take on the search for role clarity. 40 years of MP history, 40 years of PA history, <coughs> but it will be brief. When I started medicine 40 years ago, uh, nurses might well have been thought of as physicians, assistants to physicians, at least by physicians, I don't know about nurses. When I was first in practice, the head nurse on the ward of our community hospital certainly saw it as her job to help me effectively look after our hospitalized patients. I think that over the past 40 years, the profession of nursing has steadily distanced itself from this role, and it's defined for itself a professional role independent of physicians. About 40 years ago, the first nurse practitioners in the province were starting to be seen. I believe at that time, they may have been seen by assist as assistants or to physicians or extenders. In 1969, when I moved to Hamilton, to go to medical school. Our family physician had a resident and he had a nurse practitioner. And they both played a role in the care of our new family. Nurse practitioners didn't thrive at that time. And that was primarily because of insufficient financial and legislative support by government. But by the 1980s, nurse practitioners were beginning to become more common in hospitals. And by the mid-90s, primary care MPs were once again being trained this time with the legislative changes necessary to support their practice. Over the past 25 years, politics of nursing has changed with the result that there's been a steady progress to it towards NPs becoming independent practitioners with their own scope of practice. In 2009, the government passed Bill 179, which amended the, the Regulated Health Professions Act, RHPA, extending the scope of practice so that NPs could effectively practice medicine independently in the province. In 2007, the Ministry of Health and Long-Term Care announced the creation of 25 nurse practitioner-led clinics in which NPs are the lead providers of health care. So with that background, the question is, what about physicians? And I, my point of view, and I don't know if it's true, uh, is that they are relatively isolated within their own jobs. It's true, they work with NPs, they work with OTs, they work with P, uh, PT, social workers, but with regard to their own jobs, there's really no one who can help them. Physicians have no assistance. There we go. 
here's a typical patient waiting to be seen in the office. Have any of you ever had to be in two places at the same time? I imagine many of you have. Here's two patients waiting to be seen. And here's many patients waiting to be seen. It's a problem. A physician can only see one patient at a time. If, if a physician has two patients to see at the same time, it creates stress. It creates anxiety. It creates frustration. Being overwhelmed with patient demand is discouraging and frustrating. It leads to poor quality care and burnout. So at a basic level, we can ask, could a physician function more effectively if she had an assistant? If she had an assistant, then two people could be seen at the same time, increasing patient service and reducing physician stress. This model of operation, having an assistant, has been in operation in the United States for 40 years. There are now 80,000 physician assistants in the United States. The dramatic growth uh, in PA numbers from zero to 80,000 in 40 years, I think testifies to the success of this shared care model. So what's the job of the PA? Nancy's going to, she really knows, I'm just giving you the, my opinion, but the job of PA, I have a simple answer to that. It's an assistant to a physician. What do assistants do? They assist the people who employ them. What do people want for their assistants to do? They want them to do the things they can delegate to them while they look after other problems, many of which can't be easily delegated. For physicians, I often describe the PA as the resident who never goes away. Physicians understand that because they've all been residents. Physicians also understand the residents work with them. They do a lot of the work, but the supervising physician remains the person in charge. This is, re this is reassuring to the physician because it means that she can always feel that she's dictating, I'm sorry, directing the care in the way she thinks best. The PA-MD relationship is not about independent practice, it's about delegation and teamwork. So what's the difference between a PA and an MP? Well, I've talked a little about the history of NPs and PAs. But one way of addressing this is by, is a, one different way is by looking at RHPA, the Regulated Health Professions Act, which governs medical practice in Ontario. This is, this, I've simplified RHPA's control acts, but I think this, for practical purposes, covers the issue. What does RHPA say? It says, these things are controlled acts. The examination, or the intimate examination, perhaps, of a patient is a controlled act. The diagnosis and communication of that information, of that diagnosis to a patient, is a controlled act. Controlled act means not everybody can do it. You have to, it's controlled by legislation, regulation. Treatment is a controlled act. Procedures are controlled by. I've simplified, but I think it captures the idea. So, what's the um, scope of practice of NPs? Oops, of NPs. And I'm going to say they have the scope of practice to examine. It's their scope of practice. They have the scope of practice to diagnose and communicate. They have the scope of practice to treat and prescribe. And in the case of their, because their nurses also treat and administer, and they have the, the scope to do procedures within their scope. So, um, what's the scope of practice of a PA? That's the scope of practice of a PA. Under RHPA, there is no scope of practice because there's no regulation. If there's no regulation, PAs don't exist by regulation, so there is no scope of practice. However, RHPA does have another way of dealing with the problem, and it's called delegation. So, while PAs are not authorized to perform any control act, RHPA does allow for delegation. Physicians may delegate activities to a PA that they believe the PA has the knowledge, skill, and judgment to perform. So what's a PA? This is one slide I've used a lot, but I think to me it encompasses what I think of. PAs are trained like doctors. Our program is like the MD program. They're trained to think like doctors, whatever that means. They certainly train to work with doctors, to do work supervised by doctors, to do work delegated by doctors, and their assistants are not independent. So, what's the difference between an NP and a PA? Is the NP a physician assistant? Well, 
this is a statement from the Nurse Practitioners Association website. Uh, and you can see that the, it states the NP is an advanced practice nurse functioning within the full scope of practice, scope of nursing practice. It's not a second level physician nor a doctor's assistant. So clearly NPs are not physician assistants. Is an MP a physician replacement? It's a provocative question. And I would say that in Ontario, I, I've been thinking about this, but I would say, I'd be interested in other people's opinion, I, that in Ontario, MPs have been given the right to practice. But unfortunately for them, they've been denied the billing numbers to make it possible. Without billing numbers, in a society in which Ontarians expect all their health care for free, MPs have not really been able to assert their right to independent practice, not in the standard model of uh, they'll be used to with NDs. However, still under some circumstances, the answer is yes. With NP-led primary care clinics being developed in Ontario, MPs, I think, can now be set up, can now be seen to be, can set up practice without physician supervision, supervision. so I think they can be seen as independent practitioners. Is an MP a separate type of healthcare specialist? Someone working independently within their own scope of practice? For example, like a physiotherapist or occupational therapist. Well, clearly the answer is yes as well. So here's a table which you might or might not find helpful. But assistant physician, PA, yes. NP, no. Replacement for a physician, for a physician PA, no. NP, yes, sometimes. Separate independent worker, PA, no. NP, yes. To my mind, this is, one of, this is one of the fundamental issues, or one of the truths, if there are any such things as truths, about PAs and NPs. NPs have the legislative authority to be independent. By regulation, they have a defined scope of practice that is not subject to physician supervision or control. PAs, on the other hand, have no legislative authority for independent practice, and thus must of necessity work in a dependent and supervised relationship with the physician. So, what's the fuss? Do nurses want to be assistant physicians? I think clearly the answer is no. I think I've read the information I've got says the answer is no. Do nurses want to stop physicians from having assistants? Well, I presume the answer to that is no as well. Or is it just the age-old fear of job security? Nurses and MPs fear that PAs threaten their jobs. You know, that's not so different from what I've seen with MDs who fear that MPs and midwives are going to threaten their jobs. Job security is a problem for everyone. But I think the goal of healthcare workers should be the care of the patient. MDs, NPs, PAs all have to look beyond job security. So does the nurse in the cardiac suite have to worry about losing her job to a PA? I would submit clearly the answer is no. PAs are not nurses. PAs cannot do nursing jobs. Are PAs going to put NPs out of work? Well, as I think I've shown, PAs can't do nursing jobs, and nurses don't want to do PA jobs. Nurse and NP jobs are secure. So in summary, I think physicians need assistance. Nurses and NPs are not assistants of physicians. PAs are the new kid on the block there to assist physicians with their jobs, and as such, I think PAs serve a unique role in the Canadian healthcare system. Is a PA, this new type of healthcare worker, going to be embraced by physicians who are looking for help? Time will tell. But if what has happened to the border is any example, I would predict that in 40 years, we won't be able to imagine healthcare in Ontario without PAs. Thank you.